This meeting is now being recorded. All right, welcome to your 2019 benefits presentation. I am Paul Morton with Brown and & Brown, and I represent your guys' uh, employer broker partner. And I'm going to be doing a high-level overview of the benefits that Hudson Furniture offers to their employees. And this is going to be a quick high-level overview. Um, as we flip over to the next page, we'll see at the bottom. Um, if you guys have any email, uh, questions or anything you want to follow up with after this presentation, there is an email box. You guys do have a dedicated account manager with Brown & Brown, um, and that email is hudsons at bbdaytona.com, and you can email any uh, questions that you have after this presentation to that email box, and we'll get those answered for you. Um, page two also has your table of contents. So um, after the presentation, if you guys need to follow up or you want, you know, um, a, a quick way to find a, a particular topic or section, you can follow that table of contents, and that will lead you right where you need to go. On the right-hand side of that page also has some general information, like what is deductible, coinsurance, out-of-pocket maximum. Um, I'm going to give you some simple definitions to try to make those a little bit easy on you. Um, when we think of deductible, think of it as a bucket or think of it as, uh, you know, three different phases. You've got your deductible phase, which is your first phase. Once that's satisfied, meaning you've spent that much out of your own pocket, phase two kicks in, which is your co-insurance phase. All that means to you guys now is uh, you and the insurance, you're co-insuring, you're splitting the bill there. So um, your paying portion, insurance is uh, picking up a little bit larger uh, amount of the tab there, and they'll continue to pay at that co-insurance rate until you reach what's called your annual out-of-pocket maximum, or I've renamed it your worst-case scenario. That's the most you're going to pay out in any plan year. So just kind of think of that as we move forward when we start talking about your benefits um, and the medical plans that are offered to you guys. Down there at the bottom of the page, it also says when I should use convenient care versus urgent care versus emergency room. I'm not a medical professional. I'm assuming neither are you guys if you work for Hudson's Furniture. So use your best discretion on that one. Um, but I always kind of remember in the back of my mind, bigger the building, bigger the bill. So if it's something that can be handled, you know, by uh, getting a making an appointment at my primary care physician, or if it's something that I can possibly do, um, you know, at an urgent care versus emergency room, that's going to potentially save me a lot of time um, and money. All right, moving on to page three in your booklet. Um, this goes over qualifying lifespan. Since now it is your open enrollment time frame, or maybe potentially you're a new hire and it's, uh, you're doing this as your new hire orientation, keep in mind whatever benefits you elect, you are locked in or locked out of until next open enrollment. So your guys' plan runs March 1st through February 29th, so if you are up 2020. So if you decide, hey, um, you know, I don't want to take these benefits now, you know, I don't want to cover myself, I don't want to cover spouse, et cetera. And then, you know, two months from now, you're like, oh, I really want to get on the plan. Sorry, you are locked out until next open enrollment, which should be, you know, sometime, well, it'll be in March was where your benefits will um, will be for next year, but uh, we'll probably be out there in February or whatever. The system will be open up in February to get you guys, uh, you know, enrolled for next year. So if you want coverage, um, you know, definitely do it now. But keep in mind, you are locked in or locked out. Unless you have what's one of those, called one of those qualifying life events, and you can see those on page three there, marriage, divorce, uh, adoption, birth of a child, maybe your spouse loses insurance coverage throughout the year. If you have one of those qualifying life events, that gives you a 30-day window to make the appropriate um, uh, change to the plan there. Keep in mind, it is only a 30-day window. So if you have a brand new baby and 45 days later you go into HR and you want to add that new baby on your plan, sorry, you missed your 30-day window, you missed your qualifying life event there, and then uh, you'll have to wait till open enrollment to get them on the plan. So definitely very important on that. Keep in mind you only have 30 days after the qualifying life event to make those changes. Moving on, you guys have six different medical plans available to you guys. Um, we're going to start talking about the uh, three Florida health care plans first, and then there's three Florida blue plans that will be offered as well. Now, keep in mind the Florida health care plans, um, since Florida health care is kind of a localized or smaller network, um, it, all the providers' facilities are located in Volusia, Flagler, Bavard, and Seminole counties in Florida. So if you're seeking treatment in those areas, you can enroll in the, uh, the Florida health care plans. 
Um, and for somebody that doesn't have access to Volusia, Flagler, Bavard, Seminole counties, you're going to want to look at the Florida Blue plans that are offered later. So first we're going to start talking about the Florida Healthcare Plan. Um, this helpful tools page goes over the member portal, which is www.fhcp.com. Um, stands for Florida Healthcare Plans.com. Um, or you can Google Florida Healthcare Plans and they'll take you right to their website. Things you can do from the website. You can look up your providers. So you can look up your doctors, uh, facilities, um, you know, labs, all that good stuff. You can look all that and the locations up on the Florida Healthcare website. Um, you can also look up your benefit summaries. Um, you can look up your claim. So if you have an ongoing claim and you want to see if it's been paid or not, you can review that all from the Florida um, Healthcare Plans website once you log in. Um, let's see, other things with, that are offered with the Florida Healthcare website. Um, you've got your doctor on demand. So once you log into the Florida Healthcare Plans at the bottom, or you can search it on the Florida Healthcare Plans website, you can search for doctor on demand. That's a great tool. Um, one of my favorite features about Florida Healthcare Plans, because you can, um, if you're on one of the HMO plans that has a copay, um, that's not the high deductible plan. It's a ten dollar co you know copay, and you can do a virtual consultation with a doctor. Um, if you are on the other plan, um, it is a ten dollar copay once you meet your deductible. But until you meet your deductible, you're subject to a contracted rate on those services. But uh, it is um, super convenient. So if you know for minor services, cold, flu, allergy, pink eye, rash. Um, things you would normally make a, a primary care visit on or maybe need a, you know, a small prescription on, you can do those virtual consultations. They send that to your preferred pharmacy, and then you can go pick up that prescription. I've known people at, you know, our office that have used those types of services on their lunch break, and they didn't have to miss any time from work. They could go over to their appropriate pharmacy and then go pick up the uh, the medication they need. Didn't miss any time or work, especially if you got, you know, sick kids. Um, it's very convenient because you can use it 24 hours a day. So if it's 11 o'clock at night, kids got an ear infection. Okay, doc, you know, do the virtual visit with doctor on demand. Kids got an ear infection. Um, they send in the antibiotic. You didn't miss any time, any work. Um, so super convenient, awesome service. Definitely should take advantage of that. As we go into the, the next pages, too, we'll see uh, um, some, some gym lists that are uh, available. So if you enroll in the Florida Health Care Plan, there is a gym rider attached to it. So you can take advantage of any of the gyms that are on the gym list over on page six, and you can take advantage of those at no additional charge. So that's another awesome benefit that comes with Florida Healthcare Plans. Um, keep in mind any of the gyms with a double asterisk next to them, like for example, the one in the Deland, Del Sino, Orange City area, that Ability Health Service there, um, as you can see on the screen, double asterisk would require a fitness evaluation first. There is a one-time charge for that. There's a uh, $35 charge, but they'll do your O2 stats, BMI, um, stuff like that. So if it's something you're interested in, um, you know, and want to pay for, definitely do it. If not, like me, I'd probably uh, pick one of the other gym locations and just take advantage of that. Um, so a little bit of savings there if you already have a gym membership and, you you know, and you're in those areas and you can use those gyms, could potentially save you a little bit of money there. There's also, let's go back to the helpful tools page, but there's also um, the nurse advice line. So if you also have any questions, seven days a week, uh, 365 days a year, you can call that nurse advice line for questions. Um, there's also some health related topics on the uh, member portals as well that you can take advantage of. So if you need access to those, those are all available on the Florida Healthcare Plan website. Um, next, moving on to page uh, five in the booklet there. Um, that is the preventative medications list provided by Florida Healthcare Plan. So those are uh, preventative medicines at no cost to you. Now keep in mind those must be filled at the Florida Healthcare Pharmacies, um, and you can find those on the Florida Healthcare Plans website as well. Um, and those are at no cost to you. Keep in mind you must have a prescription to get those filled. Um, but definitely take advantage of those. Um, also, I will say there is a little bit uh, later in the book pages about some low-cost savings, and I would also encourage people to check the free Publix list, and you can go to Publix.com or you can Google Publix free drug list, and you can take it, uh, you know, usually you'll find it on Google, and it will show you the free public drugs list like amoxicillin, et cetera. So um, definitely check both of those to see if you can take advantage of any free medications. Moving on to the three Florida health care plans. Now, we got three Florida health care plans available. First one is the HMO T1I6 or T16, and then the TF6. One is for individual, one is for family. That's kind of why there's so many numbers there. 
Second plan is the HMO T99, and then the last plan is the HMO T70, or T78 there. So one thing I want to note is keep in mind these are all HMO plans, so they're in-network only plans. You go outside the network, and then you're going to, it's like basically paying out of pocket. So if you're paying for health coverage, it makes sense to stay in the network, maximize the benefits. That way you're not paying for out of pocket expenses when you have health coverage. So definitely stay in the network. Go on to the FHCP.com. Make sure your doctors and everybody are in network. Um, and that's where you can find a list of uh, primary care physicians. So for your uh, primary care physicians, you can also go to FHCP.com, search them, get their, uh, you know, uh, PC, prior, uh, primary care provider number, and that way you can make them your primary care provider. Um, one thing I didn't mention or may have mentioned is the, uh, the extended hour care centers. So if you enroll in the Florida health care plans, you can use those Florida health care um, centers, the, um, all the workforce wellness centers, and you can use those at a $10 copay. So um, you can find those available on the Florida health care plan website as well, or you can call the FHCP number and say, hey, where's my nearest workforce wellness center? Um, so I can take advantage of that $10 copay for, uh, you know, uh, prevent, uh, physician services like office type services. First plan we're going to talk about is the uh, HMO T16TF6. That is the one that is paired with the health savings account. Just keep in mind when you're looking at this plan, if you enroll in it, it can be paired with a health savings account, and there is some uh, pre-tax benefits you can take advantage of, which I will talk about in some of the later pages. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind, and your company will contribute $100 annually into that health savings account. Um, so that's something to think about. Now, keep in mind, if you're a new hire and watching this video and you started throughout the year, they may prorate that out or you may get a lesser amount. But if you're, you know, if this is, you're watching this for the new hire or, sorry, for the open enrollment, you would get that annual $100 if you enroll in that uh, HMO plan. Um, so first thing we're going to talk about is your deductible. The individual deductible is $3,500. That goes up to $7,000 for family. Once those are met, plan's paying 60%. You're paying that 40% co-insurance, and you're going to pay that until you get to that annual out-of-pocket max of 6000 or 12000 But keep in mind, if uh, one individual uh, member hits their uh, $7,150 limit, then they're done for the year until, you know, everybody else gets up to the 12000 and then everybody's done for the year. Um, physician services, so your office visits, specialists, chiropractors, inpatient, outpatient, or sorry, inpatient hospital, emergency, urgent care, those are all deductible and co-insurance driven. So think negotiated rate. No, that does not mean if I go for an office visit on this plan, I'm going to have to pay $3,500 deductible. Think negotiated rate. Each doctor is going to have their own set negotiated rate that's in network, um, at, you know, that they've contracted with Florida Healthcare Plan. My suggestion, use the Workforce Wellness Centers at the $10 copay. That's going to be the uh, the best, cheapest option. So if you can make one of those guys your primary care physician, um, that's going to basically be the best option there at a $10 copay. Um, if not, you're going to want to maybe ask, hey, what's your negotiated rate, Doc? So that way you know what it's going to cost for your office visit. Or you can always call Florida Health Care Plan, and they can estimate that for you. Keep in mind... Um, on this plan, this first plan, on the telemedicine or the doctor on demand, until you reach your deductible, once again, you're paying the negotiated rate for those services. Once your deductible is reached, then it becomes that $10 uh, and $30 copay there. Um, all your adult wellness exams, no matter which plan you choose, are covered at 100%. That is your routine physicals, PAPs, mammograms, well woman exams. Um, anybody over 50 that has to have that colonoscopy, that's covered at 100% as long as the office codes it preventative um, and they don't find anything. So, for example, um, it's kind of morbid, but you have to have that colonoscopy. If they find polyps and have to do removal, that did just get changed from a free preventative service to now they're diagnosing and treating you for that. So, if they don't find anything, no charge as long as they code it preventative. I know when I do my annual exams, I make sure I mention to my doctor ahead of time, hey, I'm coming in for my free annual preventative exam. This is my free one. Um, and that way I'm not to be charged for this. And just make sure those get coded correctly. Down here under pharmacy, um, keep in mind you have a calendar year deductible, and then it becomes copay. So until you reach that deductible of $3,500 for individual or seven for family, um, you're subject to the negotiated rate for that drug. So that's also something I'm going to talk about a little bit later is using GoodRx um, to potentially find some savings there. 
uh, um, keep in mind, um, you can still check the free preventative list, check the free public list and see if it's on there. Um, if not, you're looking at um, the negotiated rate. Now, once you reach your deductible, $3 copay for your preferred generics, $15 um, if you're using a Walgreens location. So keep in mind you have the ability to use for healthcare plans, pharmacies, or Walgreens. Now, if it's after hours, obviously Walgreens is going to be where you're going to get that filled because the Florida Healthcare Plan Pharmacy is closed. But keep in mind you're going to pay a little bit more of a copay. So as you go down, 10 for your non-preferred, 15 for your, at Walgreens, so about five bucks more. Preferred brand, you're looking at thirty dollars, thirty-five at Walgreens, so five bucks more for that, and then five dollars more for the non-preferred brand. And any of the specialty drugs will have to be filled at the uh, Florida Healthcare Plan pharmacies. So a lot of them are in the Florida Healthcare buildings. They've got the lab pharmacies right there, or their pharmacy is located right down the road from this location. And you can always find those on the Florida Healthcare Plan website to get the exact address on the pharmacies. Next plan we get to is the HMO T99. Once again, another HMO plan, so in network only. Um, so if you go outside the network, you have no coverage. So once again, look up your doctors, providers, make sure you have that uh, PCP in mind um, so there's no uh, delay in uh, getting those appointments set. This plan does have a $5,000 deductible, $10,000 uh, for families. Once those deductibles are reached, plan is paying 40% or 60%. You're paying 40% coinsurance, and you're paying that until you get to that annual out-of-pocket max of 6600 or 13200 If you ever hit that, knock on wood, I've never hit my annual out-of-pocket max. Um, physician services, $40 for your office visit, 80 to see a specialist, and then you're paying negotiated rate for those chiropractic uh, adjustments there. Telemedicine, um, your doctor on demand. This is a, a flat $10 copay for your uh, me medical visits. And if you have any of those uh, psychology visits, you're looking at a $30 copay there. Still deductible and coinsurance for your inpatient, outpatient, emergent, or, sorry, inpatient hospital, emergency room, and urgent care. So keep in mind you're paying negotiated rates on those services. So you're paying whatever the contracted rate is. Um, pharmacy. Uh, no deductible applied first, and then it's just the, the typical copay. So you're paying copays right out of the bat, and you can see the Florida Healthcare Plan Pharmacy copays on the left, and then Walgreens on the right. And then keep in mind, if you do a mail order, it will save you about three dollars a month to do that. Uh, you know, or three dollars, sorry, on that 90-day supply by doing that mail order. Uh, Florida Healthcare Plans, I believe, now will fill the 90-day mail order at their pharmacies but you wouldn't get that uh, that little bit of savings there by doing the mail order, but that is a convenience factor, so something to look at. HMOT78 is your last plan, uh, to the last uh, lowest deductible offered by the uh, Florida Healthcare Plan. So you're looking at 2,000 for individual, 6,000 for family. Once those are met, plans paying 80%, you're now paying 20% of those uh, deductible and coinsurance rates until you get to that out-of-pocket max of 6,500 for individual, or $13,000 for family. $35 copay for your office visits, so that's down five from the previous plan. $65 for specialists, so that's down 15 from the previous plan. Still negotiated rate on your chiropractic visits, and then still got those telemedicine visits at the $10.30. And keep in mind, you can, on both or all three of those plans, you can use those workforce wellness centers for the $10 copay. All of your, once again, all your adult wellness for stuff covered at 100%. As long as they code a preventative, inpatient hospital, you're looking at deductible um, and coinsurance. Emergency room, this is picking up a copay at 300, and your urgent care does have a copay of 70. So once again, stay in network. Make sure your doctors are all in network. Um, all right, moving on. Next, we get to Florida Blue. So for those of you outside the or seeking treatment outside of Blue, Show, Flag, River, Bar, Seminole Counties. Um, definitely you want to look at the Florida Blue plans, or, you know, maybe um, if you're in the Blue Shirt Flag of our Seminole County, maybe um, you may want to look at these as well. Uh, maybe you got a uh, student going to school away in a different area, and they can't see treatment. So that may be a reason you want to look at Florida Blue plans, obviously other reasons as well. So Florida Blue plans, their website, www.floridablue.com. Um, or if you have the old uh, browser typed in of bcbsfl.com, That'll take you right to the FloridaBlue.com, um, or if you're like me, just Google Florida Blue. It's the first website that comes up. It's very easy to access. Things we can do from the website, we can look up our um, 
oh, excuse me, our benefit summary, so we can look up um, our claims, you know, that came in with a benefit summary, so we can, our um, explanation of benefits, we can look those up, uh, see if our claims are in process, if they've been paid or not. Uh, Florida Blue has an awesome cost estimation tool, so if you have to have a procedure coming up, so you have to have um, a CT scan done of your neck, you can actually go out, look up your service area, how much it's going to cost for that CT scan at different facilities, especially if you're on one of those deductible and co-insurance rates there. It'll basically tell you the cost of different facilities, so that way you can choose before you go. And just for example, we had somebody do that in Newport Ritchie area. He had to have a CT scan done of his neck. We did the cost estimation tool. It ranged anywhere from $280 up to $960. If he did it at the Nemours Cancer Center, that was literally less than a mile from his house, um, it would have cost him, you know, the $960. Um, and we looked at one that was a couple miles further away from his home, a mom-and-pop imaging center, and that one happened to be the $280. So it does definitely behoove you to shop, um, you know, before you go for care or definitely use the cost estimation tool to at least see how much it's going to cost you. And uh, I didn't mention this during the Florida health care plan, so one thing you want to do is definitely have conversations with your doctors and ask, hey, is this the best, cheapest option? Um, so maybe if you're going to, um, you know, an outpatient center for a procedure, hey, could it maybe be done at a smaller ambulatory surgical center that's not attached to the hospital? Is something that like that an option to potentially save me money? So if you don't ask, doctors are more than likely not going to, you know, offer that up ahead of time. So definitely have some conversations with your providers. Don't be afraid to ask them questions. Florida Blue um, also has Blue 365. That's a discount program um, for things like the Ginny Craig LASIK discount. There's lifestyle fitness equipment discounts, Reebok. Um, I know I was looking at some Garmin discounts on there not too long ago. So definitely check it often, see what discounts are available. If it's something you're purchasing anyways, definitely take advantage of the discount. One of my favorite ones is through Tivity Health. There's a, a network of gyms you can buy into. Um, so Unlike the Florida Health Care Plans, where that has the gym rider, Florida Blue does not have that. Um, they don't offer that. So you can, uh, you know, buy into a network of gyms for a one-time monthly charge. It's usually about, you know, 10 bucks more than you're probably paying for Planet Fitness or one of those type of gyms, LA Fitness. Um, but you get any of the gyms in their network. Um, you, know, uh, you know, I think last I checked, it was over, you know, 7,000 throughout the U.S. It's probably even more than that now. So... Definitely uh, something worth looking into if you're already paying for a gym membership. You know, it might be able to pay a little bit more or even the same amount and get networks to all of the gyms that are in their uh, network. Also, it's a mobile um, app, just like with Florida Healthcare Plans. Florida Blue has a mobile app. You can take advantage of that. Pretty much do everything from your smartphone that you can from the full website. Look at your doctors, look at your providers, look at the drug formularies. Um, you know, get get uh, locations to those doctor's office, those providers, um, right there on the phone. Definitely take advantage of that. Um, lowering your out-of-pocket costs, pretty much talked about that. Biggest way to do that is stay in the network. So look up your providers, doctors, urgent care facilities. Look up anywhere before you go to make sure they're in your network if possible. Moving on to page nine in the booklet, this goes over the preventative list uh, with Florida Blue. So just like Florida health care plans, Florida Blue does have a preventative drug list. So it might be something worth hanging on the fridge or definitely taking a look at to see if any of the, the, you take any of those uh, medications. So that way you can uh, get some potential cost savings there because, you know, you're paying zero for those. So if you're paying for those through the pharmacy currently, something worth looking at, getting it filled at the Florida Blue pharmacies that are in network, no cost on those. And also, once again, check the free public list for the list of uh, no-cost medications there. All right, one thing Florida Blue has um, to offer is they have partnered with Sanitas. I'm sorry if I butchered that, but Sanitas, if I, you know, butchered it, I apologize. But they have medical centers that are partnered with Florida Blue, and those you guys can take advantage of for copay starting as low as $5. So and those would be like your preventative type uh, visits um, or primary care type visits. They do also... Um, have some urgent care locations built into those, um, but keep in mind it's starting as low as $5 copay, um, so definitely read up on that. All right, three Florida Blue plans that are offered to you guys. So you got three uh, three plans available. Um, the Florida Blue, Blue Care HMO 128-129, that is the HSA compatible plan for um, the Florida Blue plan. There's also the Blue Options PPO 5302, and that is a PPO plan, so it does have in and out of network benefits. And then the last plan we get to, or we're going to talk about, <clears throat> is the Blue Care HMO 61, 
another HMO or in-network only plan. <clears throat> the first plan we're going to talk about there is the HSA one or the Blue Care HMO 128-129, and that's the one paired with the HSA. Keep in mind, if you enroll in that plan, you do get that annual hundred hundred dollar contribution from Hutchins Furniture into your um, health savings account, so that's an awesome benefit. And when we get to the HSA page, once again, we'll talk more about um, some, some tax savings or potential tax savings there. $2,500 is your deductible for individual, five for family. Once those are met, plan's paying 80%. You're paying 20% of those, so you get to that annual out-of-pocket max of 5000 or 10 for family. But keep in mind, there is an individual maximum on this plan, so if one person, you know, reaches their 6850, they're done for the year. No more will come out of theirs. Um, if other people are still free seeking services, once the uh, 10,000 family limit is hit, no more will come out after that. Deductibles all, and co-insurance all the way down, so once again, same negotiated rate for services. Um, and you do have to meet your calendar year deductible on the pharmacy there. So, and then it becomes copay of 10, 50, 80. So until you reach your deductible, once again, you're paying negotiated rates for services, or so you're paying the contracted rate for that drug, rather. So once again, check, uh, you know, the, the, the free pharmacies, the, uh, the Florida free public list, uh, the free, uh, Florida blue provided, uh, drug list. Um, if not, check the Walmart $4 list, um, or check, um, you know, there's a good RX we'll talk about a little bit later, but you can check there for some uh, potential uh, cost savings on those prescription drugs. Keep in mind, no out-of-network coverage. So if you go outside the network, once again, no coverage. So you'll be paying entirely out-of-pocket for those services. Blue Options 5302. So now when you're searching on the Florida Blue website for your providers, make sure you're looking in the Blue Options network. The other two plans, you will be searching the Blue Care network, so a little bit larger network with the Blue Options. Um, you're looking at $5,000 uh, individual deductible. Once that hits, the plan's paying 70%. You're paying 30, so you get to an individual out-of-pocket max of 6350, and that goes up for uh, 10 for family deductible, then 7030, so you get to your annual out-of-pocket max for family of 127. 30 for your office visits, 55 for specialists, 55 for those chiropractic visits. Once again, all your wellness covered at 100% as long as they code it preventative. Generic, uh, you know, uh, RX plan. So if you go with the, um, with this one, keep in mind $10 copay for your tier one generics right out of the gate. And then you're paying 20% allowance or 50, which is ever is greater there on the tier two. And then those tier three drugs can get quite expensive at a $200 maximum cost share. So definitely if you're choosing this plan, you want to pull up the, uh, the drug formulary and see which tiers, uh, your drugs fall in. Um, so if you're taking those tier three drugs, that's something to consider that higher uh, maximum cost share there on the pharmacy. So definitely want to take advantage of uh, that. Maybe see if there's a lower cost, uh, you know, alternative or generic available. Last one we get to is the Blue Care HMO 61. Um, Twelve fifty is your individual deductible. Once that's met, the plan is paying eighty percent. You're paying twenty percent until you get to your individual out-of-pocket max. Or sorry. Plan's paying 80%, you're paying 20%. So you get to that annual out-of-pocket max of 5,000. Uh, deductible goes up to 2,500, and then out-of-pocket max of 10 for family. Um, 2,500 co- or 2,500, $25 copay for your office visit, so you're paying, uh, $5 less than the previous plan. Specialist visit, you're looking at a $45 copay. Chiropractic visits, $45 copay. Those are all down 10 from the previous plan. Once again, all your wellness covered at 100%, as long as they code it preventative. Inpatient, if you get admitted to the hospital, 850 a day with a 4250 max. Keep in mind though, at 850 a day, that's kind of what I like to think is your room and board charge. But keep in mind, if they're keeping you overnight, they're probably running tests, doing you know, uh, IV fluids, maybe, maybe you know, MRIs, you know, CT scans, different you know, X-rays, whatever's involved. So keep in mind, I think of that as your room and board charge. Um, but you're going to get 850 a day for every day you're in the hospital up to that 4250 max. But keep in mind, if you're in the hospital five days, don't think you're only going to walk out with that small of a bill. Chances are they ran tests or maybe there was surgery, et cetera. So your, your bill is potentially going to be higher and it'll probably reach your out of pocket max. So just keep that in mind. Emergency room, $100 copay. Urgent care, you're looking at a $45 copay. 
It's still a little bit cheaper to use urgent care versus emergency room. I know that's a low emergency room copay, but just always think bigger the building, bigger the bill. Prescription drugs on this plan, 10, 50, 80 copay right out of the bat. So $10 for those tier one, 50 for those tier two, 80 for those tier three drugs. And if you take that routine maintenance drug every day, you can save half a month's copay by doing the mail order there. And once again, in-network only plan with this HMO. So you go outside the network, you're going to be paying for that out of your pocket. Next, we get some we get to some HSA out-of-pocket maximum examples. Um, but before we're going to get to that, I'm actually going to jump ahead a little bit to page 14, 14 there. And that's going to go over kind of the basics of an HSA there. Um, HSA is a health savings account, so if you go with that first Florida health care plan or that first Florida blue plan, it is paired with a health savings account. And there are some tax advantages to the health savings account. So any money that you put in of your own funds, because keep in mind the company is contributing that $100 annually into your health savings account. So any funds you put in up to 35, well, it would be really 3,400 with the company contribution. And then up to 6,900 with the company contribution if you're um, covering family on your uh, high deductible health plan. Or if you're over 55, you can do an additional $1,000 on top of those limits. Um, if you're over 55. And that's what you can contribute annually into the health savings account, and those contributions come out on a pre-tax basis. So any money that you put in will come out on a pre-tax basis on your paycheck, so you're saving a little bit of FICA tax there, and then annually you can have some potential annual tax savings as well, um, depending on your contribution levels, if it affects your tax rate, potentially save quite a bit there as well. Keep in, money that, keep in mind this is always your money, so with health savings account, it is your fund. So any money you put in is yours. Any money the company puts in is yours. And you can use it on things other than just medical expenses. You can use them on qualified dental expenses, qualified vision expenses. There is a list of some of the popular items down there at the bottom of this page. Um, so even things like acupuncture are on the list. So you can use your HSA funds on that. Typically, medical insurance won't cover things like acupuncture. But if you have the funds in your HSA, you can you can use that. So something worth, uh, worth looking into. If you know you have some big medical expenses coming up, it may be uh, behoove you to put, the, you know, as much as you can into that health savings account, and then at least you're saving on the tax portion so you can save there as well. And keep in mind, it's always yours. Um, the only thing you would be penalized on is if you withdrew the funds early for non-medical expenses. So if you just tried to get at the funds to withdraw them, not using them for qualified expenses, or you, you know, trying to swipe your debit card, at, you know, that's attached to the HSA for non-qualified expenses. Um, there is a pretty hefty tax burden on that. I don't give tax or legal advice, but um, it's similar to like an early withdrawal on an IRA or 401k. So just keep in mind there is a tax penalty. Now, one thing is once you reach retirement age, you can dip into that um, penalty free and it would just be taxed as normal income. Or if you need it at retirement, you can still always use it for qualified medical dental vision expenses. All right, so going back a couple pages, we're going to go back to page 12 and 13 there. And those are going to go with some, uh, or show you some annual out-of-pocket maximums or some worst-case scenario um, situations. So in all these examples, Kevin had to have a major surgery that cost $100,000. And this is kind of shows you why medical insurance is important. So instead of getting hit with a $100,000 bill, you can see once he reaches his out-of-pocket max, and you can see how it works on a couple different uh, uh, plan types. Um, so definitely read through those, but for the sake of time, I'm going to move a little bit forward. Um, but definitely read through those on your own and take a look at those examples. All right, moving on to some other HSA examples. So moving on, um, we're going to show two examples here. Ethan's on the top here. And this um, shows that if he contributes $1,200 annually out of his own funds um, or $100 a month, um, some of the potential, uh, you know, savings there. Now, Ethan's a healthy individual. Looks like he's got an office visit there, maybe one or two. And he's got, um, you know, a prescription maybe or two. Um, maybe he's also got a couple of free ones at Publix or whatever. But in this example, he's only spent about 170 in medical expenses. So if he puts that $1,200 into his HSA, at the end of the year with a company contribution, um, he has $1,130 that he can roll into next year that he'll have available to spend. Um, example two, Annie's got a family of five. 
Um, she chooses a high deductible health plan. Um, she decides to put um, what she can um, into the health savings account. She contributes $3,600 annually into the health savings account, and you can see she has a little bit larger medical expenses. So she's got uh, some prescriptions there totaling $1,200 throughout the year for her and her family, some office visits, maybe an urgent care visit, some medical equipment expenses, and then a you know pretty large surgery bill. And that shows you also how the out-of-pocket works. So instead of paying the you know, the full uh, $25,000, you know, bill there. Once she hit her annual out-of-pocket max um, for the family, she was done. And then with the uh, HSA contributions, she did have some out-of-pocket costs there. So she did have to come up with some out-of-pocket costs there of 8300 But luckily, she had that HSA, so she didn't have to come up with that larger, um, you know, full amount out of her own, you know, funds. So we should got a tax break by doing that. Uh, so as we flip over to the next page, we can kind of see how that tax break really kind of comes into effect. Um, so Ethan over there um, contributes to the 1200 and at his tax break for individual, we estimated his income. Um, he was able to save $144, um, you know, pre-tax there um, by contributing to the HSA. So um, that's on his annual taxes, plus he got, you know, some savings on his FICA tax since they took that out before they took out his FICA. And then here's another example. Um, down at the bottom, our second example there with Annie and her husband, they're married, filing joint, so we put their incomes in there. And then their tax rate was a little bit higher at 22%. So by contributing 3600 to that family uh, HSA there, she was able to save $792 in tax um, um, tax amount there. So that's some big savings there that she was able to save. So even though she did have some out-of-pocket medical expenses, she was able to save an additional 792 in taxes. So pretty cool to think about it when, you, uh, when you're uh, looking at that. And once again, I'll give tax or legal advice to check the current tax rates, all that good stuff. And I like the little picture there that kind of shows the HSA versus your IRA or Roth because um, all the money goes in is pretty much tax-free on the other side um, as long as you use it for qualified expenses or at retirement age, you can get to that penalty-free. We did put down at the bottom of this page 16, um, moving to the HSA and how that can potentially save you on premium. So not only do you get some tax benefit if you're contributing to the HSA, but it looks like on uh, a lot of these um, plans there's some savings by moving to the HSA and premium. So, for example, if you move from the PPO 5302 Florida Blue individual to the HSA, um, your annual tax savings is going to be $814.08. So that might be worth putting into that health savings account. And then it feels like the same amount is coming out of your paycheck as if you had, uh, you know, the buy-up plan. And then if you spend anything less than 814 throughout the year, you can uh, you roll that into next year, and you'll have that available for future years. So, and you can bank up, and then if, God forbid, you know, down the road you have a worst-case scenario situation, you'll have quite a bit saved up in your uh, HSA that you can use to, you know, pay uh, that out-of-pocket math. All right, moving on to the cost-saving tips. So I mentioned earlier there are some cost-saving tips. So down there in the middle um, of the page there, it goes over the pharmacies, like the Publix um, and the Walmart $4 list. I know I mentioned those. GoodRx is my favorite uh, site to check for prescription drugs. GoodRx, G-O-O-D-R-X dot com, the so www, GoodRx dot com. Great website. Um, you can type in the name of any drug, and it's going to tell you it's generic. So if the doctor gives you... For example, Lipitor, and it's a you know it's a great cholesterol med, but you can go out there, search it, and uh, GoodRx will tell you the generic available. So that's something you can go back to your doctor and have a conversation and say, hey doc, I did find this is generics available. I can still take this right. It's a lower cost option for me. Great, you know, and then save some money that way. But one of my favorite features of GoodRx is you can do a reverse lookup. So if you know Lipitor is used for cholesterol, you can go out there, search cholesterol on GoodRx, and then it will show you every cholesterol drug, you know, that's, you know, manufactured. And then you can go back to your doctor with a list of them and maybe say, hey, doc, which one of these can I take that's on the $4 Walmart list or any of these on the free public list or, you know, Target or Costco or, you know, where can I get this a little bit cheaper and then potentially save a little bit of money there. And once again, um, we talked about when to use urgent care versus emergency room versus, you know, doctor's office, but just be smart on that. Bigger the building, bigger the bill. I'm just going to move on. All right, moving on to dental coverage. Dental coverage is provided by the standard. Um, so, www.standard.com. 
Um, or you can just Google the standard, and that'll take you right to their uh, their website. It's usually the first one that comes up. You have two different PPO options available for dental. You have a low plan and a high plan. Low plan is going to get you a thousand dollar annual max benefit. That's per person you're covering under the plan. The high plan is going to get you fifteen hundred dollars to use. So that's one thing to look at right off the bat. If you know you're going to you know use uh, a lot of dental services. Um, you may want to look at using that, you know, the one with the higher benefit amount. Uh, the low plan, $50 deductible in network for individual, $150 for family. They do waive that on your preventative stuff, so your cleanings, x-rays, exams, they waive it on. Outside the network, your deductible goes up to $100 per individual, $300 for family. Once again, still waive that for your preventative service. $50 and $150 um, in or out of network on the high plan as well, so keep that in mind a little bit higher. Um, deductible there on the uh, low plan. Preventative procedures, routine cleanings, exams, x-rays, those are all covered at 100% in network on the low plan, um, in the high plan, and then 100% outside the network. Um, keep in mind though, outside the network, you are subject to balanced billing. So if you go to a dentist and the normal amount that standard pays is $100 for a cleaning, and your dentist charges $120, well, even though um, it says it pays 100%, they're going to pay 100% up to that in-network rate of 100. Who's going to pay that $20 difference? You are. So just keep in mind, um, you always want to make sure you ask your uh, providers, um, are you in the standard network? You know, they, uh, you know, let them know. Because I've uh, had an instance in the past where a doctor asked me, you know, I asked him, hey, do you take, you know, my dental insurance? And he asked if I was in a PPO, and he said, yeah, I take it. So instead of asking in network, he asked if I, I asked if he took the insurance. That was the wrong question because he was outside the network, but he did accept the insurance and, and billed through his office, which I guess he thought was the same question, but I was trying to get the in network rate. So just keep in mind, make sure you always name the network or you know, mention the standard when you're talking to your dentist. Um, basic procedures covered at 80% in network on the low plan, a little bit higher at 90% on the high plan. Um, those would be things like your periodontal scaling, otherwise known as that deep cleaning. Keep in mind that service is billed per quadrant, um, so just be aware of that. Um, fillings, stuff like that, covered at 80%, 50% outside the network on the low plan, so a lot lower there. And then it, um, once again, 90% on the uh, out of network on the uh, on the high plan there, but keep in mind, still subject to balanced billing. So if that out of network dentist charge more, you're going to pay more for that. Major procedures covered at 50% uh, on the low plan. Things like crowns, bridges, um, implants, keep in mind though, implants would pretty much exhaust that full $1,000 benefit right there because it's a pretty high cost procedure. So they're going to pay 50% up to that $1,000. Once they pay that, no more uh, is coming out of their pocket. So you would be on the hook for the difference there. 60% um, um, in network on the low or on the high plan and 60% outside the network on the high plan for those major procedures as well, the crowns, bridges, implants, that kind of stuff. A little bit higher limit there, so maybe if you need one of those higher cost procedures, you may want to look at going with the high, uh, the high plan there because you got that larger uh, annual max benefit. There is orthodontia on both plans for children. Keep in mind it's a $1,000 lifetime benefit, so once that benefit is exhausted, um, it's exhausted. It's $1,000 max there. There is a rollover um, built into your guys' dental plan, so keep in mind with that, you do have to see a dentist, so you do have to have a claim done, so you got to get at least your cleanings done. But if you stay under their threshold, you can uh, roll over an unused portion of that. Um, and I believe they do a higher amount if you stay in network the entire year, um, and they'll roll over that amount into your rollover bank. And after several years, you can actually bank up to $1,000 in rollover benefits. One suggestion on that, though, is if you know you need the procedures and you have the rollover uh, bank available, use that because, um, you know, I've seen people switch plans three years down the road and they were trying to get to that rollover bank and they were just, you know, shy of it, and then they lost all that rollover money. So um, if you need it and you have the uh, money available, definitely take advantage of that. One other thing to note is since, uh, you know, if it's your first time being offered this plan, definitely worth looking into taking it when it's when you're first offered. Because if you don't take it when you're first offered, there usually is a waiting period on major work, sometimes six, 12 months on major work. So if you're thinking about dental coverage, definitely get it when it's first available to you guys. Uh, one other thing, um, with dental, make sure you get a predetermination letter. So if you have to have any major work done, uh, crowns, fillings, um, anything above your regular cleanings, 
you know, time out dentist. I want to see what the insurance is going to cover. I want to see what my patient cost is going to be. Have them run it through, um, do a predetermination, and then they'll let you know the cost before they begin the work. They'll let them get you on the chair and start the work and then find out, you know, you're going to get stuck with a $500,000 bill. So good to know that ahead of time. So have them do the predetermination letter, agree to it, and then agree to begin the work. And that's kind of how things should go in the dental world. Moving on to vision coverage provided by the standard as well, so www.standard.com. But keep in mind they are using the VSP Choice Network. So when you're searching for vision and you're on the standard site, make sure you choose the option of VSP Choice Network. Or if you're trying to find a provider, you want to call and ask if they're in the VSP Choice Network. Um, you never want to, you know, if you mention the standards, they may not know what you're talking about, but it is part of the VSP Choice Network, so if they accept VSP Choice Network, you're good to use them for service. In network, everything works like a copay, so you're looking at a $10 copay for your eye exam. You can do that every 12 months. Keep in mind it's rolling 12 months, so if you have it done in December, you'd have to wait till next December um, until you can get that uh, next eye exam, for example. So it can't go in December and then go in January. It's 12 months from date of service. Um, basic lenses, you're looking at $25 copay. That's for the lens material. Um, keep in mind, they will try to sell you on some uh, lens coatings or different options. That's up to you. Um, but though they should let you know the price of those options before they, uh, you know, start adding those on. But they will try to, you know, upsell you on polarization and anti-reflective, anti-glare. Some of these things are necessary. Some are not. It depends on your eyes. So um, definitely have that conversation with your eye care provider. Frames you're looking at every 24 months, um, and then contacts you're looking at every 12 months. Keep in mind you can get glasses or contacts. Can I get them both in the same year? Typically, if you wear both, I suggest frames first, and then you know next year get contacts, and then you're eligible for frames again because you know it's been after 24 months. Um, so frames, contacts, and then frames. That's how I suggest doing it, but it's up to you on how you want to use those benefits. If you go with frames, you're getting $130 allowance on frames and then 20% on anything thereafter. So if you like those $200 frames, uh, first 130 you don't worry about. You're only paying 80% uh, of the $70 that's left. Um, contacts, you're looking at $130 allowance in network, um, and then it says medically necessary, they're covered in full. Keep in mind that would be something like if you only have one ear, you can't wear glasses. So it would be medically necessary then for you to wear contacts. So if you just elect contacts, not considered medically necessary. Everything outside the network works as a reimbursement. So if you go for an eye exam outside the network, you're going to pay whatever that price is, and you're going to send a reimbursement uh, claim to uh, the standard, and then they're going to mail you a check or direct deposit this one um, into your account. Now, some places will handle that for you, but um, you can always handle that yourself by filling out a claim form. Reimburse up to $45. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather pay the $10 copay in network and go pay the cash price of probably $80, $90 nowadays and get reimbursed $45 for that. Um, outside the network, you're getting reimbursed up to $30 for single lenses, bifocal up to $50, trifocal up to $64, frames up to $70, so big difference there, $130 plus $20 off versus $70. And in contacts, you're looking at $105. Um, may behoove you to shop online and, you know, save those receipts and submit a claim because you could probably do pretty good with $105 versus $130 in-network allowance there. That might uh, that might work out to, to benefit you to go outside the network and send in a claim uh, for that. But um, definitely check with your in-network providers. See what uh, $130 will get you there with that allowance. Moving on to long-term disability coverage. Um, I think of uh, long-term disability as paycheck protection. It's probably one of the most important benefits next to medical insurance would be disability insurance. And this is a salary protector. So if you get, uh, you know, hurt on the job, obviously workers' comp is going to help you out there. But if you get hurt off the job, if you don't have any money sitting in the bank, that's kind of what long-term disability coverage is for, um, is to protect your salary there. Now keep in mind it will start after the 180th day, so after six months being out of work, um, you'll be able to collect on that. It'll pay 60% of your earnings. Now, keep in mind, you take home about 80% um, after taxes, so really you're losing a little bit of a gap there, about 20% there. But, uh, you know, for me, I can eat ramen noodles and hot dogs, but as long as my car's getting paid and, and house getting paid, I'm doing pretty good there. Um, maximum uh, monthly benefit you're going to receive there is up to 5000 That is based on 60% of your salary there. 
once again starts on the 180th day, so there is a little bit of an elimination period there. Um, and this will um, pay for two years if you're disabled in your occupation. So if you can't do your job at Hudson, it'll pay for up to two years. If you can't, um, you know, if you can't do any occupation, it'll actually pay up to five years. Or if you hit, you know, Social Security before then, and, you know, you can't get two uh, government checks there. Um, but we'll pay for up to five years. Usually, typically enough time if you're trying to get Social Security disability benefit. If you're permanently disabled, um, that's a good amount of time to uh, to get that in order. I know that can take uh, several years to get there. There are some long-term disability calculators down there at the bottom of the page. So if you want to calculate um, how much it's going to cost you for the long-term disability insurance, you can do that there. Keep in mind on this last uh, step, you can divide by 26 or 24. You're biweekly 26. Um, if you're semi-monthly, it would be 24. And we did put an example in there so you can kind of see um, what it's going to cost for the long-term disability insurance. Moving on to voluntary life insurance. Uh, voluntary life insurance is available to you guys. It's available to you, your spouses, um, and your dependent children. Um, guaranteed issue amount is 150000 So if it's your first time applying for uh, these benefits, which, you know, this is new to you guys, so everybody gets guaranteed issue on that, you can get up to 150000 No medical questionnaires asked. If you've ever been told in the past, hey, I don't qualify for this, I don't qualify for that, you can now get up to that guaranteed issue. No medical questions. Um, you're looking at $10,000 benefit amount, um, minimum, so 10 increments of 10,000, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way up to that 150 guaranteed issue amount, or up to a full uh, amount of 300,000, but keep in mind, if you want over that 150, medical questionnaires um, will be required or evidence of insurability or statement of health, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, will have to be filled out. Spousal, their guaranteed issue amount is 25,000, increments of 5,000, 5, 10, 20, 30, all the way up. The uh, full max benefit of 150000 but keep in mind anything over that 25000 will require them to fill out evidence of insurability. Um, and keep in mind they cannot get more than 100% of what the employee elects. So you can't take 10000 on yourself and then go to try to take twenty five on the spouse. It doesn't work that way. They would only get up to your $10,000 benefit if that's what you were electing. Child coverage, um, and that's child or children. So if you've got one kid or ten kids, you're looking at the same rate, and that's a $10,000 benefit for kids. And as we flip over to the next page, you can see a rel relatively, uh, you know, inexpensive rate there uh, for, for children. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But up at the top, some cool features that come with the uh, um, the life insurance there. Travel assistance, if you're more than 100 miles away from the home, um, you can call the number. Um, they'll help you out a little bit, get you in contact with somebody. Maybe, you know, you need med you know, medical assistance more than you know, 100 miles away from the home or, um, you know, lose your passport if you're traveling abroad, something like that, reach out to your travel assistant and probably be able to help you out in some way. Accelerated benefit, um, basically, God forbid, you're diagnosed or, you know, as terminal, um, you can get access to uh, your life insurance um, a little bit early, some of it. You can get uh, some, some cash in a quick situation where you may need it, and anybody in that situation probably needs access to some cash. Uh, life Services Toolkit, um, you can read up on that, you know, standard website, and it's seatbelt airbag discount if you're wearing your seatbelt, um, and, you know, or an airbag deploys, God forbid something happens, you were passed away, you're wearing seatbelt, there's an additional benefit there. Uh, God forbid. Moving on, um, voluntary life costs there, um, so you can see there's uh, rates for um, employee, and then there's spousal rates on the next column, so look up your age banded rate. And that will uh, help you determine your life insurance. And there's a calculation down here in this red box to help calculate that for you. Um, hopefully, in your guys' ADP system, which we're going to talk about here in a second, it will calculate this for you, be a little bit easier for you. Um, one thing I did uh, forget to mention, so I'm going to backtrack on, is the disability. Keep in mind, um, if you uh, have been offered long term disability in the past, which I know has been an offering to you guys, um, and you continue to get, take the long-term disability, no EOI is required or evidence of insurability. But if you did not have long-term disability in the past, and this is the first time you're taking it, there will be a, an evidence of insurability required by the standard. Um, so you can reach out to your HR um, or email that uh, email box, and we'll send you a, a copy if you need a copy of it. Um, but just keep that in mind. Oh, and um, one other thing, there is a look-back period, and it is a 312. 
So if you put in a claim within the first 12 months of being on the policy, they will look back three months to make sure um, that you have not sought medical treatment. So long story short on that one, you can't, you know, hurt your back, jump on the disability plan, and then try to claim that it's a new back injury. If you sought treatment for that, they're not going to pay that. Um, so moving on, you can see the life insurance rates again, dependent life uh, child or children rates down at the bottom. So relatively inexpensive if you're covering life insurance for children. Keep in mind there is an age reduction scale as well. So as you hit um, age 65, benefit reduces by 35%. And then all the way up to, uh, you know, uh, age 80 there, you can see the reduction up there. All right, moving on to your guys' ADP workforce now or your enrollment system. So this is your enrollment system. Everybody should already have a user ID and password from what I understand. Um, but to access it, you'll go to uh, https colon forward slash forward slash workforce now dot adp dot com. Um, you will then enter your login and password information. Um, click, you know, login, sign in, and then that'll get you in. You'll go to the Myself tab. And then that will take you down to the benefits tab and then over to enrollments or open enrollment. Then your screen looks should look somewhat familiar to this. It should say open enrollments. And then down at the bottom will say start this enrollment. One thing to note, make sure you have your uh, information readily available when you're signing up for these benefits. So when you're actually in the ADP system signing up, uh, make sure you have your socials, date of birth, all that good stuff you need for everybody. Uh, and that way it'll make things a little bit smoother. So. Once you click start this enrollment, first thing you're going to do is review your dependent information to make sure your information is correct, your name, address, um, all that good stuff, because they will, you know, be mailing out cards, and you want to make sure it goes to the correct address. So make sure all that's up to date, your dependent information is in there, so anybody um, you're potentially covering, or you can just type in your dependents even if you're not covering them. That way they're in the system for future years, um, but, you, you know, uh, put your dependents in there. And then number two there, there is a walk me through um, radial button there you can select, and that will walk you through your benefit options kind of like a click by click, and then it just kind of will start you with the medical and move you to the dental vision, and then all the way through your open enrollment. And then, you know, um, you can see the different, you know, options that are available to you guys, and then make sure when you're done you click complete enrollment. That is your, hey, I've finished enrollment. These are the benefits that I want to enroll in. If you do not click complete, I'm assuming you do not have coverage. Um, so definitely make sure you click uh, complete there. Important notices. You can see some important notices on the back um, on the next you know, three or four pages there. Um, you know, HIPAA. You know, we take that very seriously. We don't do anything with your personal health information that we shouldn't. Neither does your company. Um, Good information about children's uh, health insurance programs on the back there. Um, so need-based programs for any state that uh, is on the list there. So if you need to take advantage of that, like Medicaid, Medicare for Kids, um, there's a Florida number you can reach out to on that. Um, thank you guys for listening to the benefits presentation. If you have any additional questions or anything you need to follow up on, once again, I'll repeat that email box, and that's Hudson's at bbdaytona.com. And you can email any additional questions you have to that box. Thank you, guys, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.